What's up softball players, parents, coaches, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about nine reasons, nine reasons that fast pitch players and softball players in general have typically struggled with their throwing mechanics, struggle to throw sidearm, struggle to throw as hard as they want, why there is this throwing mechanics sort of epidemic in softball. All right, so let's jump right into it. Some of these tips are going to be a little bit controversial, some of them not so much, but I hope that at least one of these tips today and the reasons that, you know, softball players struggle with throwing, hopefully at least one of them encourages you to do something different. That's the point of this video, not to like nitpick or pick on anybody, but there's a lot of problems that I have thought a lot about this, about why do softball players um, seemingly struggle so much with throwing, whereas young baseball boys don't. It's not like the quality of coaches at 10U, 11U, 12U are that much better in baseball than softball. Really, they're just the same parents who have some experience in the game or maybe not. Really, the demographic of coaches and kids, not that much different. So let's talk through some of those reasons why I think softball girls struggle more than the boys do. So number one, the traditional throwing drills are just bad. The throwing drills that are used in most throwing progressions for softball are ones that were originated in like the 80s and they really haven't evolved since then baseball has dropped a significant amount of the throwing drills that softball still uses every single day that includes these wrist wrist flips pointing the ball away to center field drills these l drills where you start pause just like this with the ball um, and your arm standing straight up to the sky those are drills that baseball has phased out we don't do those anymore i was taught those as a little kid well, tons of girls and boys were taught those years ago but baseball has moved on and softball has not so that's number one number two girls are not encouraged to use their feet enough one of the things i've stressed in other videos in my online courses with baseball and softball is that if you move your feet fast and that's practicing just, you know, gather it up like an infielder, gather it up like an outfielder, move your feet, shuffle them quick, get your feet going fast, which is how a lot of the Latin American uh, ball players grow up doing. They have really fast feet. They're always moving their feet. That makes a huge difference be behind teaching the body to, to work as a whole, as a unit, as a system, rather than we just do all these flat footed throwing drills. The body never really works as a system. But when you just start to move and you're just going, your body figures out how to throw in an efficient and powerful sort of way. We didn't do throwing drills back in 1950 and 1930 when baseball was just starting to, to get going, right? Um, but yet players figured out a way how to throw really well on the farm, out in rural America, whatever. Number three, girls don't long toss enough. This is a cultural thing in softball. It doesn't seem to be stressed like it is in baseball. Now, there's some controversy with long toss. There's been some studies by the American Sports Medicine Institute that says that long toss at high angles in baseball, this one was done in baseball, um, it increases elbow stress. Is that a, a reason to cut out long toss altogether? I don't think so. But the point is, boys have grown up with long toss, and they're encouraged to do a couple of things with long toss. Use their hips well, go uphill with their shoulders well, and... They are encouraged to throw the crap out of the ball because if you're trying to throw it farther and farther away from you, you learn to be aggressive and really finish and follow through and just have some sort of like anger into the way you throw. And those are important skills. A lot of girls, they are very timid when they throw. They're throwing darts. They're just like they don't have that aggression, whereas long toss really helps to develop that. So I would encourage you to start some amount of long toss into your practice, whether it's with a softball or a baseball. I do recommend that softball girls throw baseballs from now and again. Um, that is going to help you develop some of those, again, uh, aggression, really good follow through, just getting through the ball and some other things, which I won't go into now mechanically about tilting your shoulders up and using your back and your front side better. The next one, and this one's going to be controversial, is idolizing D1 softball players and the things that they teach too much when it comes to throwing. And hear me out. So look, softball players don't grow up getting like overhand throwing instruction. Not really. Really what they're taught is they learn the same basic throwing drills, again, that I talked about, most of which are wrong. And they've grown up with most of the throwing mechanics stuff that's just like has been debunked. The, you know, like the way we taught kids how to throw in the 80s and 90s and 2000s has largely been debunked. So a lot of those drills are just getting passed on from one kid who's now a D1 player or a former D1 player is now out coaching. So you have to really consider your source. 
you might be working with an amazing former D1 softball player who's a great player, a great coach, a great person, great hitter, great fielder, great catcher, whatever. But you have to ask yourself, do they really have throwing expertise? The reason I do what I do is because I was a baseball pitcher. So long time ago, my first softball throwing lesson, a girl said, her dad said, hey, you're a pitcher. You teach boys how to pitch. Can you teach my daughter how to throw? And I was like, yeah, of course I can. It's a little bit different, but of course I can. You don't really grow up with that fine, that that heavy influence of throwing mechanics. Any baseball pitcher, that's your whole life is overhand throwing. Softball players, you just throw well enough and then you just really focus on your hitting or your pitching or your catching, your fielding. It's a tertiary skill that's not worked on that much. So then when you get a D1 softball player who maybe is just teaching what she was taught as a kid, she's now passing on those same outdated throwing drills and maybe incorrect throwing mechanics lessons from again years past that baseball has moved on from so consider your source again i know this is going to be controversial and i know it's picking on um, some former d1 players and some coaches but look you have to ask yourself as a parent or a coach who wants the best for your daughter is this person really a valid throwing expert or were they just a really good player and maybe they're what they say for hitting is amazing and gospel but throwing might not be so the next one, throwing distances are often too short. When I watch players warm up, whether they're just playing catch, whether it's between games, they're sometimes throwing like 20 feet away from each other, 30 feet away. I watch coaches hit ground balls to players 40 feet away. And so now this keeps players back in this cycle where they're just sort of like throwing darts. They don't have to throw it very hard. And so when you don't have to throw the ball very hard, this is me included, you know, I used to throw in the low to mid 90s. If I'm 30 feet away, I'm going to throw a dart. I'm going to have this pushy, this pushing throw, this low elbow, because that's what my body says, hey, this is what we need to do to get the job done when you're super close. So if you're teaching your girls to be really, really close, whether they're taking ground balls, warming up, whatever, it's going to hurt their mechanics. You need to stretch them out a little bit. So even if they're just taking uh, ground balls in between innings or in pregame or you're just hitting them ground balls, stretch them out enough, whether it's just like you know, 55, 60, 70 feet to where they actually have to put some oomph into it, move their feet, use their body to get the ball there. Obviously in softball, there's going to be a lot of short throws, especially for second baseman, for pitchers, throwing to first, et cetera. But when you're trying to develop better throwing mechanics, you need to stretch them out just enough where they have to use their whole body and they can't resort to all I have to do is throw a dart to get it there. The next reason that softball players struggle with the throwing is the big, heavy softball. So I did a video about this. I'll link to it in the description below about, you know, A, how to grip it and why I think it bothers um, or why, why I think it hurt is a detriment to your throwing mechanics. But basically, this seems like the big one of the big variables between young boys and young girls. Girls are no less athletic than the boys are. They're no less capable than the boys are physically. But yet this big, heavy ball, I think it it affects your mechanics negatively because the way you have to take it out of your glove when it's so big, it's the equivalent of me throwing like a grapefruit. I have big hands and that's what I showed in the video. I got this little mini watermelon. Um, but again, think about what the softball is doing um, to your mechanics when you're young. And I'll give you a quick anecdote. I dated a girl many years ago. She grew up on a farm playing catch with her dad, throwing baseballs. She like never threw a softball. Years later when we dated in our, in our twenties, she had a cannon for an arm. Like I was shocked how hard she threw. And I was like, and she had great mechanics. Like she just naturally threw really, really well. And I was like, what did you do? Did someone teach you? She's like, nah, I just play catch my dad on the farm. And I think the variable at hand was the fact that she used a baseball and not a softball. So when she was growing up, she had this smaller, more manageable, lighter object to throw, which her body naturally figured out how to do it better than this big, heavy, clunky softball. So this is another reason where I think that when you're young or when your daughter's young, throwing a, a, a baseball, even a tennis ball at times, just mixing it up and not always being tethered to this like cannonball softball is a good thing for your throwing mechanics. The next reason, there's an obsession with backspin. And I know a coach out there on the web who, who talks about it all the time about needing to get 12, six backspin when you throw. And this isn't really physically possible. I've talked about this in other videos as well. When your arm angle is like right here, the ball is going to spin coming off of your arm angle. So if you're throwing from here, you can't possibly produce spin that's 12 to 6. So when you start talking about 12, 6 backspin, you want to get carried, that, that's all fine and good. You don't actually get 12, 6 backspin. You get 1 to 7 backspin or, you know, 10 to 8 backspin, depending on what your arm angle is. And this is a myth that actually really holds people back because you can get backspin throwing with a low elbow like this. And again, I'll link to a description video below where I completely explain this, show examples, 
Um, this is a big problem. When we're perpetuating myths and passing them down through the bleachers or through coaching or whatever, it continues to hold people back. And so you cannot get 12 six backspin unless you throw from an arm angle like this. When you throw from down here, you're not going to get pure 12 six backspin. You're going to get one seven. It might write itself a little bit, but in general, if you're a catcher or whatever, you're not going to throw 12 six unless you have this bizarre arm action right here, which doesn't really work. So get this notion out of your head. Your arm, uh, your your spin of your throw is going to match your arm slot. So whatever your arm slot is, if you're sidearm, you're going to get three to nine spin. That's good because that's you being behind the ball. So the real thing is being behind the ball, not getting 12-6. So whether you're one seven, ten eight, or nine to three, you should get behind the ball spin, which means you're through the center of it, rather than looking for this 12 to six spin, which doesn't really exist in real life. And my last one is that coaches seem to be resistant to change in softball. And one of the things that's been helpful to baseball coaches and, who have been resistant to change, because it's just a human condition when we're resistant to change, even with new evidence, is that slow motion um, has been very prevalent in baseball. You see it on major league games. They have slow motion replays all the time. Um, there's tons more uh, slow motion video done for like pitching analysis, which pitching is a big expensive business. You know, you make $20 million if you're an average major league pitcher these days and make it to free agency. So there's a lot of money in breaking down pitchers mechanics. And so it's really hard to hide as a pitching coach in baseball because someone can say, hey, coach, you've been teaching my son this, but look, here's five major leaguers who don't do it that way. Which, which is it? The best in the world. I see him on slow motion doing this, but you're telling him to do that. It's really hard to hire from that as a coach. So a lot of coaches have had to really think critically about what they're doing, what they're teaching, when video evidence is right in front of them, essentially debunking it. And this goes back to my point about throwing drills in softball. There's really hasn't been any accountability to say, hey, this drill that you've been teaching since 1990 um, doesn't work, and it also doesn't actually accurately reflect what happens in a real throw in a real game. But in baseball, there's been this tons of slow motion because there's so much technology and so much money flowing downhill from Major League Baseball that no one can hide from it. So coaches, use get out your phones, get out your you know take some video of your players, and if you really want to grow and change and help your daughter, help the players on your team really think critically about what you've been teaching and why. And some of these notions of like where the arm is when you're ready to throw, how fast you have to get out of your glove, which is a big misnomer. Um, all those sort of things can quickly be figured out just through looking at slow motion video of higher level players, especially baseball players. One of the problems, again, going back to taking video of D1 players is a lot of D1 players have bad throwing mechanics. So if you're looking at them as the premier example, unless you're looking at you know, some of the best SEC, Pac-12, the best schools where a lot of those players do have good throwing mechanics, um, you can still get a lot of bad examples. So it's tough because, again, bad throwing mechanics are so pervasive in softball. That's why I use a lot of baseball examples in my videos here because they're, you get weeded out. If you don't throw really, really well, you cannot play D1 baseball. It just will not happen. So there's a little bit of that. So make sure that you're using technology and asking yourself, why am I teaching what I used to teach? Is it still relevant? What evidence can I have to support what I've been teaching or what if someone else has told me I should be teaching? There's a lot of evidence out there that's evolving and I'd like you to take advantage of it. So the wisdom on softball throwing mechanics and drills and throwing velocity, all this stuff, it's been evolving for the better, for sure. I've seen growth, I've seen a lot of it change um, and it's, it's improving. But the point of this video today was not to pick on any sort of group of people, but to urge you, if you're watching, especially if you made it here to the end, that it is time to, to think outside the box and wonder what can I do differently in my daughter or my team's um, throwing routine or my throwing routine if you're a player yourself? And why do I have some of the long held views that I might have been holding on to? So again, if you're teaching something that you never really questioned why you're teaching it or you were taught it as a player and now you're teaching it uh, as a coach, those are red flags and you need to examine what you're doing and why so you can say, okay, yeah, I actually, you know, took a long uh, think about it and I actually do still believe in what I used to, to be taught. Not everything from back in the day is wrong, but a good amount of it is. So you have to be, again, a critical thinker about it. Use the evidence that's available to you. Use some of the technology that's available to you. And hopefully today's video helped jog a little bit of change in what you're doing. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'm Coach Dan Blewett. I'll see you here in the next video.